Welcome to my deep dive learning path where I show you everything about AWS Lambda extensions to more easily integrate Lambda with your favorite tools. I'm Julian Wood, a senior developer advocate for serverless at AWS. This video is part of a whole learning path series going into all aspects of, of Lambda extensions. If you're wanting a good grounding on what they are, start at the first video to get up to speed. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at how you can include your extensions in functions packaged as container images, which don't use Lambda layers. Lambda container image support allows you to build and package your functions as container images from a Docker file. So you can take advantage of the rich container tooling ecosystem, including the Docker CLI. If you use container tooling to build applications, this allows you to benefit from the simplicity and familiarity of container development practices and dependency management. But you still get the operational benefits of Lambda with a larger deployment package size of up to 10 gig compared to zip archive functions, which are a maximum of 250 meg. <clears throat> you still get to enjoy Lambda's automatic scaling, high availability, start times of typically tens of milliseconds instead of seconds, native integrations with 140 AWS services, and only paying for what you use. Extensions are deployed to zip archive functions as Lambda layers, but Lambda layers are not directly supported in container image functions as images are created at build time rather than runtime. Remember that layers and extensions in zip archive functions are just files copied into the execution environment under slash opt and made available to functions. So you can use the Docker file to add the functionality of layers and extensions to your function container images just by copying files. There are a number of ways to add the files you need from layers and extensions to your images. An extension publisher can have a container image format version of a Lambda layer. Instead of adding a Lambda layer, you add the container image layer to your, your function build process. As Lambda layers and extensions are simply files, if you have the code, you can include the extension files in the container image. And in a two-step process, if you want to share the extension container images in a similar way to Lambda layers, you can package just the extensions in a layer as a container image and then share them as you would other container images. And then the second part is when you build your Lambda function, you then add these container image layers to your Lambda function as you would any other container image layer. If there's an existing Lambda layer without a corresponding container image version, you can actually extract and copy the contents of the existing Lambda layer into your image function. And I'll go through each approach and show you how it works. Just to recap, first of all, for a function packaged as a zip archive, Lambda layers are added as part of the function configuration. This is added using the CLI during create function or update function with a dash dash layers parameter, or you add layers using the Lambda console or infrastructure as code tools, such as AWS SAM, the serverless framework, Terraform, or any others. If an extension publisher has a container image version format, you can add the, con the container image layers into your Docker file. Here, I'm adding a shared library image layer, which is hosted on Amazon Elastic Container Registry Public, ECR Public for short. And I also have an extensions image layer hosted elsewhere. This is from a partner, so it could be on Docker Hub, or it could be your own private registry if it's your own extension. This example uses the Docker file multi-stage build process to then start from a Python, ba from, from a Python base image and copies the files from the shared library and extension layers into new layers above my Python base layer. And you can also import extension code directly from a URL if it's hosted somewhere. That's another way to get the code into your image. As Lambda layers and extensions are simply files, if you have the code, you can include the extension files in the container image. This example includes both the extension files and function files in a single container image. This is the Python Lambda function using the Lambda provided runtime. And it's also a Python extension, not a compiled binary. So it copies the extension files and then does a pip install of the extensions requirements. It sets the extension files as executable and then copies the Lambda function code into the image. And this creates a self-contained image containing the extensions and the function. If you want to share their extension container images in a similar way to Lambda layers, you can package just the extension files as a container image and share the image as you would other container image. This example starts with a slim Python Alpine layer, just as a build environment, which it references as an installer layer. 
It then copies the extension files into slash opt and runs a pip install as before to install the requirements for the extension. Then the Docker file starts a multi-part build, but from scratch and copies the files from the installer layer into the blank image. This creates a clean image with only the extension files and installed requirements, rather than everything from the slim Alpine Python layer. And then using the Docker CLI, you build the extension image from the Docker file. You then tag it with a name and version, log on to your repository and push the layer, which contains just the extension files to ECR in this case, or in fact, any repository. When you then, then build your Lambda function, you then add the extension container image layer you've created to your Lambda function as you would add any other container image. This is using the same approach as option one, when the files are copied from the extensions layer and then the function image is built from a Python base image. Using the Docker, uh, Docker CLI, you then build the function image from the Docker file. The function image contains the extension files as well as the function code. And then you tag it with a name and version and then push the function image to ECR. At this stage, function images do need to be stored in ECR. When you create a Lambda function, you set the configuration package type as image and the location image URI to the ECR repository you push to in the last step. You can set environment variables as part of the function configuration. These can be used by both the function and the extension. The last way I want to show you how to use extension files is if there's an existing Lambda layer, you can extract and copy the contents of the layer into your function image. You can use this for existing shared or even public layers, or even layers you haven't created yourself. Lambda layers are actually stored in S3 behind the scenes. And so you can use the AWS CLI to get the Lambda layer version location and download the files using trusty curl to a local zip file, which you can unzip and use as local files to then add to your container image. The AWS CLI does require authentication even for public layers. So it's best run on an environment, be it your workstation, EC2, a container, or somewhere else that's already authenticated to AWS. If you are using an automated build process and need to download the files from within a Docker file, you need to inject the credentials into the Docker file or other build environment to run the AWS CLI. <clears throat> I do need to give a warning. You do need to understand the security implications of this approach. You need to send an AWS access key and secret access key as environment variables to your Docker file to copy the files from S3. Ensure you use and store build time specific credentials with permissions scoped to only the resources you need access to. And you can see here the environment variables are set up. And then the layer download ha happens and extract happens from within the Docker file using the same approach. and this uses the access key and secret access key environment variables in the credentials. Notice the multi-part build here, which is very important. Starting a new layer squashes all previous layers, which removes the credentials from the final image. This example starts from a scratch-based layer to create an image including just the extension files. So if you don't do this, your credentials are available in the final image, which could be a security issue. When you run the Docker build process, you send the access key and secret access key as build arguments to the Docker build process. If this runs in a script somewhere, you need to make sure that the credentials are scoped down and kept securely. You can confirm the contents of your final image by running Docker history and checking there are no access keys visible in any of the final container image layers. Let me jump into <coughs> a demo. In this video, I went through including extensions in functions packaged as container images. As Lambda layers are only for zip archive functions, I showed four ways, including the Docker file code for including extension files. These include building a separate extension image for sharing, as you would with Lambda layers, and how to extract files from existing Lambda layers, even in an automated build process, when you need to inject credentials into a Docker build process. In the next video, I'm going to be looking at how extensions can send logs to custom destinations. And I'm going to be use a, using a function packaged as a container image to show this. For all plenty of things more about serverless, head over to serverlessland.com with lots of resources, blogs, videos, workshops, and other learning paths, everything about serverless on AWS. 
Thank you for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time to learn about Lambda extensions. My name is Julian Wood and you can find me on Twitter at Julian underscore Wood.